All right, on the Always Moto podcast this week for show 51, we've got the number 51, but it's probably not the 51 you're thinking of. It's an Australian privateer. Uh, he raced the Aussie Supercross rounds this year, uh, had a little bit of an injury in Newcastle, uh, but he's on board to talk to us today. It's Ryan Kollenberg. How you doing, Ryan? Hey, good, good. How, how's things been? Yeah, awesome, man. Um, nice to make some time this morning for us, buddy, and um, good to check in and see how things are going after that crash cause in Newcastle because it was a decent one for you man yeah obviously happened so quick but definitely uh a long-term recovery situation <laughs> yeah it's so that it was the heel that was broken wasn't it yeah so i shattered i shattered my heel bone they say when it breaks it's not a clean break it it shatters like an eggshell so it's not just a six-week healing process it's more of like a 10 to 12 week situation so um so yeah that's yeah that's why it's taken so long it's a sucky injury point to, to get broken. Like you said, it doesn't break clean. So everyone's like, no. oh, yeah, it's a broken bone. You'll be sweet. But, yeah, for some reason, that one and, and some other points of the body too are the same. Like, it just It's not yeah. as clean as, as you know, just a, you, I broke my radius, you know. Like it's yeah. it's a bit more ugly. And, it, and, and of course, for that he, area too, for the heel, it gets a bit poor blood supply. So it takes us longer time naturally to heal and it's got more parts yeah. to it. So it's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, fully. And, um, yeah, obviously it'd been probably one of the most um, dominant weight-bearing points of your body as well. So Yep, yep. It, um, Adds to the yeah. complexity, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah. How sure. was the recovery? Like Newcastle was, what, uh, November last year and we're now in March. How's things going for you? Yeah, yeah, it's going, um, it's going well. I, like I was saying earlier, I only started walking about, two weeks ago now um but i've been staying really active like just trying to walk as much as i can and do my little squats and road cycles and stuff just to get it spinning um but i actually i actually got back on the dirt bike uh last weekend which is pretty cool so how long was that for you that you were actually off the bike man um i was off the bike for 12 weeks i think it was yeah, that's a long time, man. How how was that for yeah. you? Was it were you going nuts at some point? Yeah, well, um, obviously for supercrosses, and I was something you can take lightly, and you have to train as much as you can. And I got an opportunity to ride pretty much full time, so I was three days on, one day off. Um, so going like full time on the dirt bike to laying in a hospital bed for a couple of weeks was definitely. It definitely changes the terms of events. That's for sure. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big whack to the reality at that point when yeah you go from being so active to being stuck, almost doing yeah. nothing. You know, so yeah it's, yeah, it's a big change in the life, and it takes it's a hard thing to get over mentally at some points because you do just start thinking all those bad thoughts while you got plenty of time to do nothing and think about this stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and and that's why it's so important to have like really good friends and family around you in your corner, like. Like just trying to think positive and think of the future and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I've definitely been blessed with the best, that's for sure. Yeah, nice. So it's good to have that support. So, but what yeah. about the recovery for you? Like, obviously, 12 weeks is a long time. Was there any yeah. any tools as such that you were using that maybe were a little bit different to, to getting back? Like, we've had some, some of the guys from the US and stuff on here at times telling us about, you know, bone stimulators and, and they're cutting holes in casts to make the bone stim, you know, fit inside so they can get the recovery happening as soon as quick, as soon as possible. Is there anything yeah. that you did, you know, differently or, or maybe out of the box that, you, you know, you went through to get this to this point now? Um, no, nothing dramatic. It's, it was more of like resistance training again because I lost like all my quad and calf, like all my right leg muscle, but it was pretty much just elastic bands and stuff. We did look into purchasing a stem cell machine from the US. Oh, yeah. Um, one of my buddies has them um, from 0%, but he, um, he, by the time I could get it and the doctors to approve it to get shipped over and all that, it was just, it wasn't worth pursuing just because it was going to take a couple of weeks. Months, sort of. One of those things, you look at some of this stuff at times and think, yeah, that'd be awesome to have. But by the time you yeah. get it, it's like three or four yeah. weeks down the track and it, you miss the boat on, on the effectiveness because you need it from you know day two or something after the injury. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, unfortunately. And then it was, it was hard to like, go to someone that had a machine because I wasn't that mobile as well sort of thing 
Yeah, too. Well, you're you're on the south coast of New South Wales too, so it's probably not something like you're not in a major city there that um, yeah. is going to have all access to this in sort of a 10, 20 minute radius from you either. So it would be a decent yeah. travel to get to. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And um, yeah, but yeah, otherwise, other than that, yeah, just like the elastic bands and um, I was going to Baymed um, Physiotherapy and Climber, so they're all over it. Yeah, I know those guys. I used to work down in, in Wollongong a little bit and had some yeah. clients with them and they're good guys down there. They're actually they're, they're part of the uh, one of I think their Wollongong branch is actually <laughs> ones that look after the, the dragons yeah, okay. up there, so or at least it used to. Um so yeah, yeah they're, they're well yeah, into they sports, look after so the things. hawks and stuff, I think it is. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah the hawks from the so- Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, but, they're, um, they're up to date with it all, man. So that's a good spot that you found yourself in. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And, um, yeah, I think moving on into 2023 season, I definitely, definitely want to come back into Supercross. I don't know how we'll go, but just give it a go. <laughs> is that, is that the next sort of like race plan for you? Like to sort of work back towards that point? Cause it's a fair yeah. way off yet. The Aussie season, um, it's yeah. probably not until September ish or, or thereabouts, but you'd want to be starting to, to, to really get into the Supercross training probably late July. Is that is that yeah. the aim at this point? Yeah. So um, when in the so last season in 2022, it was like my rookie year. But um, I'm 25 now, so I, I don't know if I left it a little bit late. But um, reality definitely <laughs> took a hold of me from like like working hard and stuff while I was a bit younger. So I just seen a window, and my friends from MX Locker Active Co. Um, Drew he called me and. Um, I don't know we just spoke about it and it just didn't seem like a crazy idea to go race in Supercross. So it was like a, um, just a situation where you grab the bull by the horns and go for a ride. So Take I don't the know. Punch, mate, and go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Supercross is, it's definitely not something you should take lightly. Like you, you have to work really hard and be really disciplined on it and ride to your ability. And that's sort of what I was doing. Like, um, Obviously, I crashed out, but I wasn't trying to hit big sections or send it as big as I could because, like, as you get hurt a lot sooner. But um, yeah, I don't know. When when I crashed, it was I I went on off and just banged first gear, but I front I framed it a little bit, so I front wheeled off the on off, and then I just held it wedged, and first gear wasn't enough to get me over that jump, um, and I didn't realize like I had this stop like smallest mental blank for like one second um and that's what got me undone really like i could have just rolled the triple to double it but i sent it and then didn't realize what i was doing wrong until it was too late and then i jumped off because it was i don't know i was coming up on the back side of the downy and i know if you lean on top the bike will pull through and if you lean flat you can sort of bounce and pull through but I was landing on the back of the down ramp and that's like dead stop. So, yeah. um, so that's why I chose to jump off. It's, I have a lot of friends that say I should have held on and stuff, but I just, unfortunately at the time, that's just what happened. Yeah, it's what has the saying, ifs and buts for candy and nuts. At that point, you don't know which one's going to work out the best and you take the punt in that split second as to this is my best option and you figure yeah. it out afterwards, don't you? Like you, you yeah. everyone's a, everyone's a, you know, Monday morning well, quarterback and they can tell you what you should have done, but they weren't there on the bike as you were flying towards that face of the, of the down. Yeah. So yeah. See at, at Melbourne, I um, actually done a similar thing in um, qualifying, which was pretty crazy because Marvel stadium was my first ever gate drop for Supercross, which is like a big deal. You picked a but, nice um, venue to start off, mate. Like that's pretty much <laughs> the biggest stage that we can get to in Australia for it. So yeah, nice yeah. work as the first one. Yeah, literally, yeah, and I felt that confident. Like, I had such good people behind me. I was like, uh, Kieran Hall is actually my mechanic down there, and he's obviously well-known in the sport, in, in Australia for sure. Um, but, I, yeah, I've done the same sort of thing. I frame case the triple at Marvel Stadium, and I smashed my face, and it, like, it, I don't know if I broke my nose, but it bloody hurt it, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, and then... And then, yeah, I was like the same situation and I was coming up short and I'm like, I'm not doing this again. That hurt. And then, 
yeah, I probably should have held on. <laughs> ah, look, like I said, ifs and buts, mate. So you don't know. Yeah. It, it, it was the decision you made and you've got to live with it. So, you know, yeah. maybe next time you'll look at it differently with knowing what's happened the second time around. But let's hope <laughs> you don't find a third effort for this one. So Yeah. But yeah, like, it's definitely when, not on the agenda. No, but there. like when you're saying about like you're trying to stick to you know your, your speed that you could do go and and you know just stay yeah. within your skill set and and you've got to be really focused on supercross that's 100 percent. you know the the tracks are really they're not difficult but there's very quickly can catch you out if you're not really sharp and on your game and the yeah. comment that came to mind when you're talking there before was something that um justin brayton said to me when i've been interviewing him at times and he says the track has a speed limit and I think yeah. it, not just the track, but the rider should have a speed limit as well because they should know yeah. what they're capable of when they're on that track as well as what the track is giving them at the time in terms of the ruts are breaking down further or, or the lip is going away. You know, you've got to really yeah. pay attention to those little details and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of time to get that right. Yeah, and, and that was something I found, like for me personally, I'm obviously a different – skill level to someone with the likes of like cloudy or something where yeah. they can like come through the whoops absolutely singing but for me i like i could hit the whoops like all right mind you i hit them for the first time like oh four days or something before marvel stadium eh? wow so you were really was, like, fresh at this everything point. was everything was really fine tuned um but i was just staying patient and consistent and just trying my best and we got there and was like pretty successful for Marvel Stadium. I think yeah, we qualified, but obviously didn't place it there. But anyway, um, yeah, like you can, you come into like the whoops and stuff, and during the moto they edge out and they they swap and they change, and yeah, you got to like you got to adjust your speed to what the track's doing as well. Like you can send it, but if you're going to send it into ruts, you probably like big transitions. You're probably going to come unstuck at some point, sort of thing. Yeah, well, it makes those those times like you know you've you identified you got to sort of adjust your speed there. It makes those guys yeah. that are at the top level when they're doing like a say they're doing a fifty second lap time, and by the end of the main they're still doing a fifty second lap time. It makes yeah. that all that much more impressive at that point, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's yeah that like bring, like mentioning that for sure. Like I used to watch the AMA and stuff, and it was like it was cool, like everyone was racing and whatever. But like spending a lot of time focusing on training and better in myself and learning the sport like at a whole different sort of level it's like yeah you respect them top runners like just all the just everyone everyone from like matt moss to freaking justin Barsha, like yeah they they're just so talented and just the ability that they actually have to jump a motorcycle is just ridiculous yeah so they can climb it and be so confident even i guess jet lawrence is someone everyone's looking at like he's just he's just perfect to get it that good he's like yeah, they're working hard, that's oh, for sure. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, when you look at those guys and think, geez, they just got it. So Make it look like it's effortless, but, you know, it's not effortless. For everybody else in the world, it's not effortless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Well, let's, um, let's jump into something a little different here. We're going to start doing this with all of our um, interviews here. We're going to ask a little question about what's under your gear, like as in yeah. the protective gear that you've got under there. So what what are you running underneath the pants and jersey? Have we got knee braces or are we on the knee knee pads? Are we wearing an armor or are we not wearing an armor? What's, what's under the gear for you, Ryan? Yeah, so I choose the Alpine Star Tech 10s. Um, just purely because I like the technology that they've got. And and even in my crash, I feel like like I shattered my heel bone and I landed directly on my leg. So, like, if I, I reckon if I had anything lesser than a Tech 10, like, there should have been way more ankle damage or foot or leg. Like, like they are, they're just such a solid boot. Um, yep. They actually have, like, a piece of, um, like, styrofoam in the sole of that boot. So, once... When I have a crash like that, um, the styrofoam actually compresses and it reduces impact. I think it's minuscule, but it does work. It's still um, something. It's a little bit of a crumple zone, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and you pay like 800 bucks or whatever they cost for a set of boots, um, but they're worth your money. Like, you know, in, like I look back at it now and it's like my other foot didn't get hurt. This foot didn't break an ankle, like um, like ankle, like joint damage or yeah. anything. And for 800 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. Um, Definitely. And then, and then I run my Active Co. race wear, so my jersey and pants from them, yep. which is obviously the best on the market. And the knee races are the K8 
pods. So they're the carbon version you can get, the K4s and stuff, but they don't, the K8s are just a bit more better size. So the K8s have like a, a small medium and then a medium and then like a medium large, whereas the K4s are just small, medium, large. So yeah, I found the K8s definitely suited what I was doing a lot better. Do you feel? Do you notice a difference in the in the carbon fiber, like in the weight for you when you're using those? Um, I don't think it's the weight as such, but they're definitely they're definitely you don't notice them. Um, but the yeah, they fit they fit heaps better. Yeah, like, nice. I don't know because I'm not I'm not a big guy. Like I'm a, I only weigh like sixty five kilos, sixty four or something. Is that, I'm not sure on my boxing weights, but it sounds featherweight to me. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty small, I reckon, buddy. <laughs> I reckon I could go in the featherweight class for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, and what about on the top then, half? We got anything up yeah. the top? Yeah, and then I just wear, I just run my fist gloves. The fist gloves have always been my pick, um, and I pay for them. So, yeah, they're definitely the glove to pay for. Nice. Um, and then I run a an M8 A Star helmet, and it gets painted by Brownie from Brown's Graphics. Oh, nice. Running a custom lid. Yeah, yeah, I actually I'll send you some photos through, but it um yeah, it's pretty sick. It was a full Marvel Stadium custom design helmet. That's awesome. I've always wanted a custom helmet. Those things have looked yeah. awesome over the years. There's different stuff that people have had on them. That must be pretty yeah. sweet to be able to hang on the wall later too when you're finished with it. Well that's that's the thing, like, you know, I'm not going racing to win a championship. Like I'm just going racing to make memories with friends and family and um obviously there's like some sort of ability that I've got to go and do it. Like I mean, I'm not not a top athlete, but I definitely I definitely try my best and have a go, which is what it's all about, I believe. Um, especially for what I'm doing, and and even more so, like other privateers, like it's a shame you see so many talented kids, like sort of at my level, and no one's having a go at Super because it's like I don't know. It definitely is not to be taken lightly, like I said, but it would be cool to see more people line up and try and qualify sort of thing even. I think the hardest part for us in Australia, and I know I had it when I was a bit younger, is just not, the access to the tracks is just difficult. Depending on where you are, yeah, it really impacts who who's nearby and like whether it's a five-hour drive or not to find a decent place to actually learn how yeah. to do it. So it can yeah, that, yeah, that's so true. Like now you mentioned that. Yeah, it, that was – um, I had Matt and Trav Lindsay looked after me heaps. I think yeah, it was Matt, Trav, Dylan Wheels, and Luke Clout. They um, they have a track that I was able to get onto, and it was like the biggest blessing ever. Like if I didn't have that opportunity, yeah, right, it would have been bloody yeah. difficult. <laughs> makes it makes it so much easier when you when you're sort of within an hour of a decent track and somebody that's going to be able yeah. to you know, maintain it and build it to spec too, so that it's actually then, resembling something that you're going to actually had, hit in the race. Yeah, well, I have a really great relationship with Nara Motorplex as well, with nice. Tyson down yep. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a clause, I don't know the politics behind it, but they can't just put a Supercross track down there. It's got to be like fenced off and all that. So um, Motorplex was able to help cater for that. So um, we're able to put some sections in that were like, could help us train our timing and just little bits and able to actually just do a moto without, but like without being on a supercross track, but just somewhere to ride. So yeah, Motorplex was definitely um, like something I'm forever grateful for as well. Like they, yeah, they've definitely been good. Cause like you said, it's hard to actually get onto a track. So um, it's good when you get people like that willing to support a local yeah. rider. It makes a big difference for, especially for us Aussies. It's not like, not like we're in California and, and the practice tracks have, their own supercross yeah. track on the side and you can just rock up on, on whichever like, ride day and, and go for it. It's it's not the yeah. same in, in Australia from that side of things. We don't have a, a, an actual facility that's sitting there waiting for us with, with um, supercross yeah. tracks ready to go. So it uh, makes it a big difference when you do have that connection. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, lastly on that point, like, the thing that got me super surprised, I think Reese Bud's from New South Wales, but... They say he's from Queensland now. I think that's where he's living and training or whatever. But, like, there was only three of us at Marvel Stadium. It was me, Jai Roberts, and Jackson Hadlow. I'm pretty certain it was just us three New South Wales riders, which is crazy. Like, the amount of guys I know from New South Wales that ride dirt bikes and are fully capable, it's um, it's crazy that not more people are having to go at it. Yeah, that's – you think back, like, you know, probably like – three. 
Yeah, like three guys. three guys. It's not very many, but like you think back ten or fifteen years, and that would have been a lot more because you know, like look back to the era with like the Chad Reed and then and Ando, you know, they're, yeah, they're they're New South Wales guys. They would have had you know decent tracks and a lot more people you know around there trying to do it with them. Just yeah, yeah something something shifted. Obviously, a lot of the the higher level guys for us in Australia are going and living in Queensland because there's more access to tracks up there. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah. I'd, it's disappointing when you say there's only three New South Wales guys as a fellow New South yeah. New South Wales man. It's it's disappointing to hear that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. That was for the MX2 class. Obviously, there was a couple more in the MX1, but yeah, it was oh, it was either three or five, but I'm certain it was three at Marvel Stadium. And then and then Jai Roberts got hurt at Adelaide, so it was just me and Jackson Hadlow at Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. So not, <laughs> not a lot of depth there is there for us, unfortunately. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Well, look, um, um, so you know, we're get, getting to that point where you know you're going to be doing a bit, bit more laps here in the near future, and, and ideally, we're we're seeing you fit and healthy come Australian Supercross yeah. round in in a few months. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's it's all coming back together, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely on track. I've got some good people around me for sure, and making life a lot easier and um, more comfortable to get back on track. But uh, yeah, so yeah, last year was the rookie year, and I was like huge learning curve and uh my friend drew from mx locker rang me up um and just i don't know we were just chatting and yeah just come up with this great idea that she should go racing supercross so see what happens this year <laughs> <laughs> i love that it was just a phone call and you're like yeah i think i can do supercross why not he says yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's well, such and, a- and it comes back to like the painted helmet as well like a lot of people will comment saying it's too expensive and stuff but like when I can put that on my wall and enjoy it in ten years to come, like you know, this it's just like good. There's so many we made so many great memories and we met a lot of amazing people, like um, and had good support from like Baden from BBR and stuff as well. So um, yeah, like I said, this yeah, it's a good sport. They're all we're all family and um, and friends, so it's good to. It's just good, yeah. Well, that's all. at some point in like twenty years' time, you're going to be at Marvel Stadium for something else. It might be a concert, <laughs> it might be a footy game, and you'll be with your with your kids or whatever, and you'll be like, "Yeah, I raced my dirt bike in here one time," and they'll be like, "What? You did what?" You know, yeah, that's a memory you can't. They can't take away from you, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, fully, and that's what it's all about. Um, yeah, that's awesome. No, that's that's a that's a sick thing. It's it's an awesome thing to have in in the pocket and in the in the brain and in the memory bank. So no, look, I, I respect what you're doing, and I I look forward to seeing you back on the on the track this year. And um, yeah, at the yeah. Supercross races, we'll we'll be coming and checking you out. And maybe we'll get some, get you back on when those races are happening again as well. But look, appreciate yeah. you having some time for us here on the Always Motor Podcast, man. No, that's perfect. Uh, thanks heaps for the uh, number fifty one invite. Done forever. <laughs> uh, look, we got to we got to ju- line these things up when we get the chance. In episode fifty one, why can't we have the fifty one on board? So you know. <laughs> oh, Jay. Awesome. All right, man. Let's leave it there. But right. Thanks for your time on the Always Motor Podcast. All right, legend. Thank you so much for your time.